everybody. I'm Cassidy, one of your Indianapolis Colts cheerleaders, and you're watching the Believe in Colts podcast. What's going on, Colts fans and NFL? Those of you who are here to hear everything that happened in the Indianapolis Colts presser with Chris Ballard as he talked. It was supposed to be about the 53-man cuts, but it ended up being pretty much about Jonathan Taylor. There was maybe three questions uh, asked that was not Jonathan Taylor specific, right? Uh, So there's a lot of information to go through about Chris Ballard's stance on Jonathan Taylor and we're going to get into that in just a moment. But before we do, I want to remind everyone that BetOnline is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, NFL, and more. BetOnline continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting, your favorite casino and card games, available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, where the game starts. So as I mentioned, he had that press conference, and wow, there's a lot of stuff going on. And from basically what I get out of the whole thing is Chris, not only does Chris Ballard value Jonathan Taylor, not only... Does he does he value him? Not only did he not really want to trade him, but yeah, he wants to keep him. He wants to repair the fences. He wants to mend fences with Jonathan Taylor, get things fixed so that he's happy and stays with the Indianapolis Colts because he understands and values him not only as a player, but as a person. So I'm going to go through a lot of these clips. And we're going to discuss them individually as we get through. And the first one, well, I mean, it was his intro as he walked in the door, pretty much. This is what he had to say. Jonathan is a well-respected and a, and a really good human being and a damn good football player. I think we all know this. All right? Um, things like this happen. I tell every rookie that comes in, there's going to be a point when we disagree, and it's usually about money, and it's going to be hard, and just know that doesn't change my care level for you. I care deeply for Jonathan Taylor. I have great respect for Jonathan Taylor. Um, Our relationship, I would tell you, is, look, even when it gets hard, I, I won't... I won't quit on the relationship, I won't do it. I think too much of the young man. I think too much of what he's given our organization and how hard he's played for us. And what sucks, I mean, the situation sucks. I'm not going to sit here and give you some rosy picture like, oh, this is just, everything's okay. No, it sucks. It sucks for the Colts. It sucks for Jonathan Taylor. And it sucks for our fans. It, it just it does, and it's it's where we're at, and we've got to work through it, and we're going to do everything we can to work through it. Relationships are repairable. They're repairable. Like I don't I don't. When guys get emotional, um, and take a stance, I. It, you got to have some. You, you know, you got to be able to work through those. I mean, have you ever in your life had a good friend, a spouse, family member that you've had a disagreement with, and then you draw a line in the sand and say, this person's out of my life? Well, no. I mean, like, how how do you do that? No, you work through it. And hopefully you come out the other side better because of it. All right? We got work to do. We do. We got work to do on the relationship, and we got work to do to, to find a, a solution to the problem and what, you, what we're going to do. So basically what he says is he has a ton of respect for the guy, right? He knows that he's respected league-wide. And he understands that there's a relationship issue right now where there's distrust 
uh, between Jonathan Taylor and the organization, and it's over money. And Ballard says that he's, you know, he, he pretty much, you know, after three years with the organization, he was comparing him to family, family, saying you don't cut the guy out, right? You try to fix the situation, all right? And he says that there's a lot to do, and he's got to figure a way out how to not only mend the fences and fix the relationship, but he also said he's, he's got to, you know, find a way to find a middle ground uh, between what caused the issue in the first place. So that's a huge step right there. Now, remember, this is this is the guy who's talking to Jonathan Taylor. This is the guy who is responsible for whether or not Jonathan Taylor stays or goes. It is not Jim Ursay, as national media would have you believe, right? It is, in fact, the GM, Chris Ballard. Now, let's talk about how, you know, when it comes to paint, what's he have to say about that? You said the running back market is what it is. Um, how much do you think the running back position in particular when it comes to JT's contract negotiations or discussions you all have had has factored into um, what he, he wants or what you think is, is, is fair on both sides? I, let me say this. I, I, the running back market is what it is, but you pay – I've said this all along. Like, I didn't have – what Quentin Nelson didn't have a problem playing a guard a lot of money, which other people don't either. Like you, when guys are having great seasons and great, have a chance to really help your football team. Absolutely. I mean, I, the running market is what it is, but look, great players are what they are too. So I, I think that all works. I think there's a. Again, Chris Ballard makes a very valid point. In the history of the Indianapolis Colts, he's never been afraid to pay guys, no matter what their value is on the market, right? A guard. Who pays a guard $20 million a year? Well, Chris Ballard did. Who pays an off-the-ball linebacker $20 million a year? Well, Chris Ballard did, right? I mean, he has a history of paying these guys, and there's no problem with that, right? I, I firmly believe, he said at the beginning, before all this started, before all of this started, he said, right, that he's not paying anyone this year, right, that he has no problem paying somebody in the middle of a season, but he's not getting into contract talks right now, that that'll happen later on, right? Now, there is an issue, obviously, with Jonathan Taylor not liking the fact that he's not talking contract talks right now. And that's where all this started, apparently. But he's being fair to him with the rest of the team. It's not just him he's doing it to, right? You got Michael Pittman Jr. and you got Grover Stewart as well, who are both at the end of their contracts need contract extensions. He has not had these discussions with these players either. All right. Here's uh, the next thing that Ballard had to say about the situation. What I'm going to tell you is Jonathan is valuable. Um, and at the end of the day, we're not, you know, I'm not just going to let him walk out the building. I'm not going to do That's not the best thing for the Colts and the organization. All right. As for the decision to put him on PUP, it's when you're still having effects from last year's surgery um, and still having pain and not 100%, we're not going to put a player on the field that's still complaining of pain in the ankle. I'm not going to do that, an injury. I wouldn't do that to any player. wouldn't treat anybody any differently. So what Jonathan will do is he will rehab his butt off and try to get himself ready to go. Again, Chris Ballard has to do what's best for the team, okay? As much as he may like a person, he has to do what's best for the team. Via, he's not just going to let him walk out the building for nothing in compensation, all right? He's one of the best players in the NFL at his position. He may be the best player on this team, you know, talent-wise. He's not just going to let him walk, 
the Colts have all the rights to him. So to be like, uh, you know, with the whole trade situation, no one even offered a second round pick for him. He's not going to come off of Jonathan Taylor for anything less than a second. And it was reported they wanted a first, which I understand. But if you don't even, if you state you want at least a first and no one even offers a second, then of course you're not going to let him go. Now, they're, they're, we've already had these discussions a lot. You know, he's been injured this whole time. He's been on the pup this whole time. Teams aren't going to offer a crap ton of uh, trade compensation and pay the guy, right? And that's one of the reasons why there wasn't a lot of, you know, trade compensation offered by any team because he was still on the pup, could not work out for other teams because the Indianapolis Colts never signed a waiver to let him do that, all right? Why is he on the pup to start the season? He says he's not 100%. Ballard said that Taylor is not 100% and he still complains of pain. So he starts, he's going to put him on the pup. He's got to do what's best for the team. Now, here's the thing, right? If Taylor is on the pup the entire year, and this is considered a sit-in the entire year, it does not play, his he does himself zero service because his final year of his contract will then prorate to next year. And he'll be in the exact same situation he was this year, only a year older and two years removed from uh, playing his best football. So that's going to hurt his contract. As Ballard said, Jonathan Taylor is going to work his butt off to get off the puck so that he can get out here and play. That just makes all the sense in the world. Now, how did how did this end up being what it is today? Well, Ballard had something to say about that as well. Of the dispute standoff tweets from Jim Mercer, JT's agent, JT himself, has that affected any line of communication between both parties, all parties? <laughs> well, look, I've done the I've I've communicated consistently with. Malky and Jonathan. Um, I've definitely talked to my owner, um, who has great insight. I mean, look, he's been doing this a long time. Um, and it's a, it's, I think sometimes you, everybody gets a little emotional. Um, and I, I just doesn't think, it, I don't think it does any of us any good right now to, to blame, point fingers. I just don't, I think that's, that's not productive for what we need to get done going forward. Wow, he doesn't want to point fingers. He doesn't want to say, "Oh, Ursay's tweets might have had a little something to do with it," or, you know, Johnson Taylor's agents' uh, tweets had anything to do with it. No, he's like, you know what? You know, I've talked to both. I've talked to Jonathan Taylor, and I've talked to his agent. Obviously, I talk to Jim Ursay on a consistent basis. I talk to all three of these guys, right? And it's stupid to dwell on the past on what you know, emotions when they run high, what you might say, right? It's time to get past that and try to move on in order to fix the situation because dwelling on it fixes nothing. Well, quite frankly, he's right. But at the same time, uh, when you, if someone says something and it hurts, you know, it, it hits you in your emotions, then sometimes, and I'm just going to say this, sometimes the best way to start repairing a situation is to get someone to apologize for the hurt emotions. I get it, you know, whoop D, these are adults, these are professionals, they shouldn't, you know, worry about their emotions, but they're human beings as well. And an apology can go a very long way. So, uh, once I, I fully believe that once somebody steps up and bees the bigger man and says, look, my emotions got the better of me. Maybe I did something wrong here. Maybe the other side would do the same. And all it takes is one person. And that's when talks can actually become productive. All right. 
We'll see what happens. Chris Ballard seems to have a pretty good solid head on his shoulder and understands the situation. Let's hear, hear what else he has to say. Oh, that's the way I look at it. I think he's a really good player. I think he's a great kid. I think he's a great for the community. Um, that would be the plan. Um, I'm not going to get into hypotheticals of yay or nay, but I don't want the indication that we don't want Jonathan Taylor. That is not true. Um, and not true by any stat. I've never once even made that statement. I think one of the things that's like the one thing that never gets mentioned, and maybe it's just because I've never really had the opportunity, but like everybody keeps bringing up the tag and the automatic. I've ne we never used it. We've never been in that situation. To use. Again, Ballard says he wants him. He wants to keep Jonathan Taylor. He values him and he wants to keep him, you know. And people talk about, you know, the running back market and how you just tag one year, tag another, maybe tag another year, and then let him go. Chris Ballard's never used the tag. Now, and he, but of course, he was he was man enough to admit, I haven't really been in a situation where I needed to, but I haven't used it, right? And, you know, so what's the point of sitting here talking about it when I have no history of doing the tag in the first place? Right. I and it's, it's it's fully understandable. Now, is it there? Can he use it? Will he use it? If the tag was off the table, would Jonathan Taylor have a little bit more, you know, willingness to 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 be a little bit more lenient? Well, this is this is what he had to say about that. He offered to uh come in. If you guys would take that off the table, is that true? Did you I, never, have that I never had, you know, I never had that discussion okay. about that. I mean, they asked if we would use it, and I said, well, it's a tool. Yeah, it is. It is a, it is a tool. Um, it was CBA bargained, you know. So I'm not, like the one thing, and I told Jonathan this. I said, I don't want to say something that is not true. Right. Like I don't want to lead him down. I don't want to lead him down a path. And say, okay, give it, and then it, and then he looks at me and says, "Well, you're a liar." That, no, and you're not doing to do that. I don't. You don't want to make false promises that you can't keep, especially with players, because the second you do it, you're done. There you go. There you have it. He never told him that because it's not true. You cannot make a promise. Do not make promises you can't keep the players. Always be straight up and honest with them. Now, has being straight up and honest with Jonathan Taylor caught, maybe caused a little bit of a rift? Possibly, right? Hey, it's a tool. It's there. I can't promise I won't use it. Sometimes, and, and, and sometimes that's not a bad thing, right? Sometimes you use the tag as a tool while you're negotiating, while you're still in negotiations. It's happened, right? And then you end up getting the contract you want and you don't miss any time. That is a big deal. Now, other situations, the tag can just hurt. You know, you're, you're hit with the tag, you hit with it again or again, and then you're released. And now you're, uh, you know, 26 year old running back out on the market, right. With, without a long-term deal. And that, that, that blows for players, all players, want the comfort of a long-term deal so that they know, you know, they don't have to worry about their future. And I understand that. Chris Ballard understands that. But again, he has to do what's best for the team at the situation. Don't ever lie to them. The moment they feel you have lied to them, even Ballard said, you're done. You're done. Your relationship is irreparable damage, right? Nothing you could do to fix that. Because now anything you say, they won't believe you and they want out. Ballard said right now he has never lied to him and he feels like that there is, there is a chance that he could repair it. He's going to do everything he can to do so. But it's going to take both parties to do it. Both. Both Jonathan Taylor plus the Indianapolis Colts. We've seen Jonathan Taylor out there. It's not like he dislikes the team. He's out there during training camp preseasons and practices, dabbing it up with the coaches and the players. He loves the organization itself. And 
He's done a lot with the community and the fans. He's a great human being. He just wants, you know, what any player, anybody in the league would want. And there's been some miscommunications and some emotions. And Ballard is trying to mediate that now. That's what I got from the Indianapolis Colts roster cutdown presser that was supposed to have been roster cutdowns, but ended up being 90% Jonathan Taylor. Let me know in the comments what you think of the situation. I think that there absolutely can be a chance that this could be fixed, but Jonathan Taylor needs to get himself off the pup list, be ready by week five, and play his heart out so that maybe by week eight, Maybe then, you know, it shows he's still at the 2021 level. Maybe Chris Ballard will offer that extension. We'll find out. Well, I'm Lawrence Owen. This was Believe in Colts brought to you by Bet Online. And as usual, go Colts. Do you believe? 